What is the first step in the BLS algorithm? The answer is A. Recognition of cardiac arrest. The first step in the BLS algorithm is recognizing cardiac arrest. Quick recognition is crucial for initiating the chain of survival. Signs include sudden collapse, absence of pulse, no breathing, and loss of consciousness. Recognizing these signs promptly allows for immediate action and increases the chances of survival. When assessing for a pulse, how long should you check before determining that there is none present? The answer is B, 10 seconds. When checking for a pulse, you should spend no more than 10 seconds. This time frame is long enough to accurately detect a pulse if present, but not so long that it significantly delays the start of CPR if needed. If no pulse is felt after 10 seconds, you should immediately begin chest compressions. When performing CPR, what is the recommended compression rate? The answer is C, 100 to 120 compressions per minute. The recommended compression rate for CPR is 100 to 120 compressions per minute. This rate maximizes cardiac output while still allowing for full chest recoil and compressions of appropriate depth. It's fast enough to maintain blood flow, but not so fast that it compromises the quality of compressions. What is the recommended depth for chest compressions on an adult? The answer is D, 2 to 2.4 inches. For adult CPR, the recommended depth for chest compressions is 2 to 2.4 inches or 5 to 6 centimeters. This depth ensures adequate blood flow without risking injury to internal organs. It's important to allow full chest recoil between compressions to allow the heart to refill with blood. Which of the following is a common cause of cardiac arrest? The answer is D, ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular fibrillation is a common cause of sudden cardiac arrest. It's a serious cardiac rhythm disturbance where the heart quivers instead of contracting normally, preventing effective blood pumping. While conditions like hypertension and diabetes can contribute to heart disease, they don't directly cause immediate cardiac arrest like ventricular fibrillation can. What is the recommended compression to ventilation ratio for BLS in adults? The answer is A, 30 compressions to two ventilations. The recommended ratio for adult BLS is 30 compressions to two ventilations. This ratio emphasizes the importance of chest compressions in maintaining blood flow. Research has shown that this ratio provides better perfusion of oxygenated blood to vital organs, including the heart and brain. What is the correct hand placement for performing chest compressions on an adult? The answer is B on the lower half of the breastbone or stunum. The correct hand placement for adult chest compressions is on the lower half of the breastbone or stunum. This position allows for the most effective compression of the heart against the spine, maximizing blood flow. 
Placing hands too high or to either side can reduce the effectiveness of compressions and potentially cause injury. When should an automated external defibrillator, AED, be used during basic life support? The answer is A. As soon as possible after the patient collapses, an AED should be used as soon as it's available after recognizing cardiac arrest and starting CPR. Early defibrillation is crucial for shockable rhythms like ventricular fibrillation. The sooner an AED is applied, the higher the chances of successful resuscitation. The AED is designed for use by both lay rescuers and healthcare professionals. In an unwitnessed arrest of a child, when should you call for advanced medical personnel during BLS? The answer is B. After five cycles of CPR, in an unwitnessed arrest of a child, you should perform CPR for two minutes, or about five cycles of CPR, before leaving to call for help or get an AED. This approach is different from adult BLS because children are more likely to have a respiratory cause for their arrest, and immediate CPR might resolve the issue. When performing BLS on an infant, what is the recommended depth for chest compressions? The answer is B. 1.5 inches. For infant CPR, the recommended compression depth is approximately 1.5 inches or 4 centimeters, or about one-third the depth of the infant's chest. This depth ensures adequate blood flow while minimizing the risk of injury to the infant's more delicate anatomy. It's crucial to allow full chest recoil between compressions. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.